Pink Floyd song. I think that might be from the Division Band. I'm not sure. On the turning away. Wonderfully interpreted there by Richie Havens. And a busy day, friends of yours. And an unexpected visitor this afternoon. And a welcome visitor. Uh, good afternoon, John. Good afternoon. John Johnson from, I'm going to get it wrong again, Collinsby and Tattersham. That's right. Not Tattersham and Collinsby, but no, Collinsby and Tattersham. Doesn't really matter, really. Right. Well, so we're going to talk about the CD first. You can if you want to, well, yes. You, you produce a CD, sing a song on Christmas, Christmas, and this is all of um, all of you and your cohorts, I take it. Well, there's the junior school and the uh, people from the Royal Air Force have taken part, and, and uh, there's, there's six tracks. And of course, the Collins being touched, we've got, got a track on it as well. We've, we've got a track on I'm it. I'm surprised you've not done a local 12 Days of Christmas. You've probably done that before for Christmas, I, months, haven't you? I do have a 12 Days of Christmas poem, which I'll bring in, and we can read it out before Christmas. We're not going to no. do it before Christmas. No. We'll do it, not, not today, we're going to do it another day. On the cusp, near Christmas. On the yeah. cusp, so to speak. That is correct. <laughs> and it's, it's based on the 12 Days of Christmas, but it's a slightly humorous version. Have we spoken this since you had your, your show? You had your showtime day, didn't you? Oh yes, that was quite a success. Have we spoken to you since then? No, I don't think so, no. But that was all right. You had full seats? Yes, we had a full house, thanks to uh, County Links Radio, because people filled the filled the hall up. We had to get extra seats out to do all that, so... Well, we promoted it every... every uh, yeah, it did very well. Every show, every bunch show, and, and what we're doing today, we went out in one of the hours. It was in excellent. one of the segments, because, you know, we do, we do community quarter to, uh, quarter past and under half past... And the morning shows we have we have the uh, the local news on a Sunday. We ex have an extra bulletin of what's mm. going on. It was excellent. It was really it was a good show. Everybody enjoyed it. It was hard work because it was just a one day event, one show. So we rehearsed in the morning, and then we went straight into it. And we had it videoed, and somebody switched the mics off, so the part of mine was missed. So it didn't really matter. I had a bit of fun, and that's all that matters. Well, that's that's the idea of it. You entertain people. You give yeah. it all. And you make yourself look a fool, which is why I sit here. <laughs> no, so radio is radio's a better medium because you have as before you, as you sat there, you haven't got to wash your neck or wear, wear a clean shirt. Well, no, no, that is But true. you're being videoed today, so no. I wish you, wish you told me it was going to video. I'd probably dig you You'd have put your tux on. <laughs> yes. so, I think you've got, you've got a story, haven't you? You've got to read for yes, the start. I, I, because I write poetry, and somebody gave me a poem challenge, and Agatha Christie, Hercule Poirot, was on. And uh, so I decided I'd use him and to write a poem. Right, I'm going to turn my microphone off and you can go in your own time. OK then. So here we go. Hercule Poirot was perusing one day on a case that came in and wouldn't go away. I was watching the telly, as one has to do, but my little grey cells were just thinking of you. This case would be so simple, but why is it hard? And why didn't she sign my Valentine card? Ah, the captain of Norman's Hastings came in and quietly closing the door, said, we'd analyse the writing, but we still cannot be sure. Miss Lemon Peel was making a coffee, with biscuits she served on a tray. She smiled as she entered, full of caring, for she didn't want to get into the way. The tray had an envelope on it. Your mile has arrived by the post. A handwritten note lay unopened and was handed out to the host. Hercule Poirot opened his letter, he smiled at the words that he read. My card and this note are the same author, but I fear for her life, he said. She sends me a card of feeling, then a note to say she has to travel to town. For her life has become in danger. She needs our help, his face in a frown. The note says her husband's a bank robber. He's on the run from the law. She knows too much for her own good, whereupon that is the flaw. I thought that wives could not testify against their husband, as Hastings was now in full flood. But she is only his girlfriend, and he is up to no good. Do we know what he looks like? And where does he reside? In what direction is he running? And where do you think he will hide? The postmark is in Horncastle, the same as on the card. The note to say she has to travel to town. For her life has become at any danger. She needs her help, his face in a frown. The note says, a, oh, I've copied this twice. Oh, that's bad, isn't it? I'm sorry about it, listeners. <clears throat> so I think we might try to find him before the travelling. The postmark is somewhere. I'll, I'll 
I'll start where I've, I've obviously copied this out and done two pieces twice, so I do apologise. The postmark is from Horncastle, the same as on the card. So I think we might try to find him before the travelling gets hard. Let's start at the beginning by going to Woodall Spa. Just a place for a bank robber, that's Horncastle, it's not so far. The telephone rang with its purring. Hercule said, I will answer that. He reached and picked up the receiver and a voice began to chat. I see, he answered. We'll soon be on our way. We thought we might try Woodall, as, it can, as we can be there today. The car came round the corner, tooting as the tyres came to a halt. All aboard and they started. Time is the essence, not fault. My little green cells keep telling me that our man is hiding not far from town. And if we get there this evening, I know we can hunt him down. The town was all in darkness as they checked in at the Gold Hotel. The manager was pleased to see them, but none of the story could tell. They were getting ready for breakfast when a letter was dropped on the floor. A photo a tall man was boarding, and a note telling some more. Ah, said Hercule, this man I can find, for he's out on the golf course, cross-cutting on his mind. But how do you know he's out there, Captain Hastings replied. Why, his picture is there on the wall, with Gary Player at his side. His green-keeping activities was just the job that he knew, but he could leave and go bank robbing and still hide from the boys in blue. They walked off to the golf course, dressed in gold clothes, you see. Hastings just carried the clubs, as a caddish day he would be. The 15th hole was his favourite, a man on a mower was there. Hercule just hit his golf ball, and he watched as it flew through the air. Good shot, said Norman of Hastings. The man on the power mower had stopped. The ball hit him square on the forehead, and down from the mower he dropped. They walked over to get him arrested, unconscious and out like a light. His bag of money close by him, just in case he had to take flight. The police were highly delighted. A case solved and the evidence was still in his hand. Hercule Poirot had succeeded again. Miss Lemon Peel could not understand. How he knew it was the golf course, the 15th hole was the scene, where a photograph with his hero, Gary Player, was his only dream. My little grey souls told me, like the writing there on the wall, with a, cat, with a man who just wanted to be a caddy, with a big smile on walking tall. He only took to bank robbing to play golf, like the wealthy, you see. So there you go. Okay, John, we're going to have a break right now. <coughs>